Hi friends, in the previous video we have studied about the chemical properties of water. So in this video we will be studying about the physical properties of water. So firstly, water has high specific heat capacity. Specific heat means the amount of heat one gram substance must absorb to absorb heat or lose, or lose heat to change its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. So for example, the simplest way to, to understand this is Let's say you have a pail of water and it has 1 kg of water. The temperature of water is 24 Celsius. So now to change the temperature or to increase the temperature of water to 25 degrees Celsius, you need 4.2 kJ of heat to increase the temperature of the water. Therefore, water takes a long time to heat and a long time to cool. Why? Because to break the hydrogen bonds in the water molecules require a lot of energy. To break these water, uh, hydrogen bonds, it needs a lot of energy. How much of energy? 4.2 kJ of energy, uh, heat energy to uh, break the bond. The physiological rules of high specific capacity is it prevents body temperature from rising too fast. Water can absorb a lot of heat from muscles or environment before the body temperature rises. It provides a constant environment for aquatic organisms to live. Why? Because there is no fly wide fluctuation of temperature of water and also there is no sudden change of temperature of water from day to night. Let's say you are walking by the beach, right? On a sunny day, you will notice that the water is much more cooler than the sand. Why? Because the heat capacity of water is higher compared to the heat capacity of, uh, of sand. The physical properties of water. Water has high latent heat of vaporization. Heat of vaporization means what? Energy required to transform a substance from a liquid to gas at a given pressure most probably will be atmospheric pressure. So the same thing, 1 kg of water needs 2260 kJ of heat to vaporize. So why is the same thing? Because a lot of heat is required to break the hydrogen bonds in water molecules just to change the liquid state to gas state. So there are two types of vaporization. One is evaporation and another is boiling. So evaporation is called as slow vaporization. It happens at the surface level of the water. Boiling uh, is a fast vaporization. It occurs below the surface level. Below the surface level of the water. Vaporization at the surface level or vaporization at the surface level results in cooling of the surrounding and also minimum loss of water. Okay, the physiological rules of High heat of vaporization is it enables the land invertebrates to survive. For example, like snails and earthworms are nocturnal animals, so they search for food at night to reduce water loss through evaporation during the day. Second is it cools body temperature effectively. Panting helps to get rid of excessive heat in dogs and also in birds. Water evaporating from the lungs is more effective to cool body temperature than from the skin. So third, it lowers body temperature. When we sweat, water and body salt are released to the surface of the skin. Sweat consists of 99% of water. Therefore, water that evaporates from the skin, it helps to lower the body temperature. Why? Because we have seen that vaporization that occurs at the surface level results in cooling of the temperature. Sweating occurs at the surface level of the skin. So when it evaporates, it cools down the body temperature. It also lowers the temperature of leaves. Water evaporating during transpiration in plants helps lower the temperature of leaves. Let's say during a sun, on a sunny day, water evaporates during the transpiration in plants will help to lower the temperature of the leaves. So water vapor will be lost from the leaf pores in transpiration. So when water is lost from the leaves what happens is it needs to take more water through the leaves so this helps lower the temperature of leaves next the physical properties of water is the water is highest at 4 degrees celsius 
When water is cooled to 4 degrees Celsius, it sinks. But by further cooling, it will start to float. At 4 degrees Celsius, the intermolecular bond of water are the shortest and water molecules are more compact. So see here, this is the hydrogen bond uh, in, uh, in water molecules when its temperature is 4 degrees Celsius. So in 4 degrees Celsius, water, uh, water exists in a liquid state. So the hydrogen bond is weak. Why? Because hydrogen bonds constantly breaks and reforms due to high kinetic energy. So, what happens is, due to the high temperature, the, kinet the kinetic energy also increases. This causes the hydrogen bonds to constantly breaks and reform due to the kinetic energy. But when it's at zero Celsius, water exists in a solid state. So at zero Celsius, water freezes, ice expands due to the hydrogen bond occupies more space in solid medium. So the hydrogen bond in the in a ice state or solid state, it's more stable. This results ice to be less denser than liquid water, causing ice to float. So wow, why what happens here is when uh, the temperature is low, the kinetic energy also decreases. So hydrogen bonds will not uh, break or reform constantly it will stay it will be stable unlike in a solid uh, liquid state water will constantly the hydrogen bonds in the water will constantly break and reform because of the kinetic energy so freezing starts from the top of water surface downwards as the surface is exposed to lower temperature first so freezing occurs from the top of the water layer towards the towards down so after a certain thickness is formed ice insulates the water below so when ice insulates the water below heat cannot escape from the water preventing further freezing so the physical proper uh, physiological roles of highest density at 4 degrees celsius is it enables aquatic organisms to survive water at the bottom of lakes or rivers will not freeze which allows aquatic organisms to survive during winter. See, because the ice insulates the water below, nutrients are able to circulate in the lake, which helps to multiply the growth of organisms. So uh, organisms or aquatic organisms in the water below this ice uh, will be able to survive because of the temperature of the water. It's 4 degrees Celsius. It's not ice. Ice insulates the water below. Physical properties of water is water has high cohesive force. Cohesive means an attraction between like molecules. Adhesive means attraction between unlike molecules. So due to hydrogen bonding, water has high cohesion due to water molecules attracted to each other. Cohesion means what? Like molecules. So water has like molecules therefore they are attracted to each other let's say there is a bottle filled of water so how to explain the ad adhesive and coercive force in this uh, example is okay so there is two molecules of water when two molecules of water attract each other it is called as cohesion because cohesive means attraction between like molecules this is one water molecule, this is another water molecule. So they are like molecules. So cohesion force is present. But here at the surface of the bottle, there is a different molecule. So here, at here it's a water molecule. So the force between the surface of the water, surface of the bottle and the water is called as adhesion. We will see how cohesive force related to the physiological roles of organisms so the cohesive force helps transport water and mineral ions up the leaves together with cohesive and adhesive force water creates a transpirational pool in the xylem vessels when evaporation occurs in the leaves so when evaporation occurs at the leaf of course water will be absorbed by the root first because it needs more water right so water be absorbed by the roots in the xylem vessels in through to, through the stem also through the xylem vessel and through the 
leave also to the xylem vessel. So how 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 does the cohesive and adhesive force creates a transpiration pool is? You see, all in all the xylem vessels, what happens is the wall of the xylem vessel is called as adhesive. Adhesive force is present. Right? So the water molecule will be attached to the surface of the xylem vessel, it's called as adhesive. By when the water molecules, two water molecules bond together or attract together, it's called as cohesive force. So to to to, uh, to allow the water to transport up through the leaves is it will transport like this one water molecule attached to the xylem vessel and then another cohesive force between the water molecules and then another cohesive force and this water molecule will be attached to the uh, xylem vessel so this is how it uptakes the water to the leaf next physical properties of water is water has high surface tension there is a skin like layer form at the surface of water caused by hydrogen bonding so the cohesive force is formed causing a strong inward pull of water at the surface so uh, you see the water molecules at the surface of the water it has a different force compared to the water molecule in the bulk of the water we will see in detail so see in the bulk here what happens is uh, there is a force in all direction of the water molecule right but at the surface layer what happens is there is no downward force why because you see at the water level there is two medium one is air another is water so cohesive force means what attraction between like molecules which is water molecule and other water molecules now here air is present at the surface level so there is a unlike water or unlike molecule so of course there is no cohesive force present Therefore, there is no downward force on the layer of the surface. So, what happens is, uh, a strong cohesive force will be uh, formed at the sides of the, the water surface. So, this results in like a stretch, stretch membrane or skin like layer at the top of the uh, water surface. Because there is two medium, one is, one is air and one is water. So, because of this, what happens is, the surface of the water will be formed like a stretch membrane, like a skin-like layer. Therefore, what happens is, let's say when you place a needle on top of the water, uh, it will stay on top of the stretch membrane. But when you apply a force, let's say you pushed it down, the stretch membrane will be broken, so the needle will uh, sink. Because of the stretch membrane, the needle is able to float on the uh, water because of this skin like layer the physiological role of surface tension is it creates a habitat for insects to live on the surface for example water skaters catch and gather food on water surface and also another example is female mosquitoes lay eggs on water and these tiny eggs can float on the water surface so this is an example of water skaters is able to walk and gather and catch food on the water surface we have studied the chemical properties of water and also the physical properties of water. Thank you.